is going on guys? Jason Burke here, Styles Clash for Life, coming at you on YouTube, and today I've got another edition of The Drive-In, where I review recently released movies and tell you guys whether they're worth watching right away, worth waiting for, or worth skipping altogether. Today I've got a 2019 release here for you that came out primarily in 2020, uh, but it is considered a 2019 release because of when it first came out. It is a pretty popular film amongst the horror community, and I will tell you why. It is Mortuary Collection. The Mortuary Collection is a horror anthology that released on Shudder in 2020, and I think now is available also on Amazon Prime. So it's out there for the world to see, and let me tell you about it. It is written and directed by Ryan Spindell, starring Clancy Brown and Caitlin Custer. It runs about an hour and 45 minutes, and it is a horror anthology where there's a framing story, and there's four short stories um, that are involved in the anthology, leading around to the wrapper. So you've got one overarching story and four shorts inside that story, uh, where basically, long story short, in the trailer you kind of see what, what the wrapper is. So I'll give you guys the wrapper. Uh, Clancy Brown is this kind of macabre funeral director. He's a ringer for the tall man. He looks just like the tall man from Phantasm. He's got this pale, crusty, lanky, kind of, kind of, of, kind of eerie visage. He fits this character so well. The casting, really, for this whole thing, but especially for the rapper, is on point. Uh, so you've got this tall man, played by, by Clancy Brown, and he's this funeral director who's dark, kind of like isolated from the world. He's in this dark, macabre, big, deep mansion with hollow hallways and all this, this old Gothic-style mansion. And he's running in this funeral parlor, and Caitlin Custer's character comes in to look for a job. She's kind of trying to escape her life and find a job in this funeral uh, parlor as a funeral director. And Clancy Brown decides that he can scare her away, and she believes that she is not going to be scared by anything he has to say. So in getting to know each other and her getting hired, they sit down and Clancy Brown tells her some stories from his past in the funeral parlor and uh, she tries to get her reaction for them. So it's a nice framing device. Right away, it sets a tone for good acting, really good sets, good casting, and um, sets up some pretty cool stories. Now, just to kind of give you a basic overview, spoiler-free, of what those stories are, uh, the first one is a mirror monster, uh, where, a, where a girl is partying at this ritzy mansion, and she goes to the bathroom and encounters this really creepy monster in the mirror of this person's house. The second one is a, uh, a frat boy um, college campus kind of a story, where uh, a guy is kind of... He runs this, like, virgin club. He, he's, like, the head of this, like, celibacy club. And he basically uses the, uh, the celibacy and the overcoming of sexual desires to prey upon women at this college campus and hook up with them. And uh, it backfires. Um, at, as you can tell right away, it's going to backfire. It's a horror story. Uh, that is the second one. The third one is a man caring for his sick wife, being bogged down by all the concerns and medical... Uh, repercussions and all the different things he has to do to keep up with his sick wife and so he has a moral dilemma of possible choices and the fourth one is the babysitter murders so it is kind of a reminiscent of like an old Halloween or like an 80s slasher where babysitters in the house and has to avoid uh, outside forces trying to mess up um, the caring of her for her for the child she's looking after uh, so those are the four stories without spoiling anything that are in this film, and there really are no weak ones. Uh, there are some pacing issues. The thing, this, this thing runs an hour 45, but because you've got a rapper and four stories, five overall stories, uh, that's not a very long runtime. It is kind of an average for a horror anthology. Uh, there are some pacing issues where a couple of the stories, particularly um, one and four, run really, really short, and then two and three kind of run a little bit long, where... If, it, if, they, if two and three were cut down by like five minutes, this would be a perfect movie. This, this would be like a home run automatic film. Uh, but because two and three are paced a little bit off and the runtime starts to lag in the middle a little bit, uh, it takes a few points away. Not much. There's still uh, every story in this is still good. All four stories are solid um, and all different and very nicely. There's a good bit of diversity in this. Um, but there are some pacing issues in the middle, so it's not perfect. Um, Overall, I thought Ryan Spindell did a great job writing and directing. All the writing feels legitimate. It feels current. It feels like the characters have good uh, rapport with each other. 
I think the casting, like I said, especially in the wrapper, but really overall was good. Um, you know, good good choices of, of lighting, I think. Um, you kind of have some, some lighter lighting in some of the, the um, regular stories. And the darker, more gothic lighting is for the wrapper, which really fits the cool location they used. I think all the locations are good. They give you a nice claustrophobic feel to it. Um, the sound design, um, it's, I think there's moments where there could be a little extra music or, or sound cues in this film, but when they do use them, they use them very well. Um, I, I wish, like I said, there was a few more times where I could have hoped for some sound or music, but when they go to it, it is appropriate and it is nicely leveled, so I like the sound in that. Uh, it's shot well, and there really aren't any technical flaws with it. Um, overall, like I said, a few pacing things that take away a little bit, but all in all pretty solid. Um, that's about all I can say without spoiling it. We get around to the wrapper at the end, which brings us a nice twist. I kind of expected the twist. It was not super well hidden. Uh, once you get to the fourth story, you kind of figure it out. Uh, with that being said, they continued on to give it a nice clean wrap up, which you didn't necessarily expect. Uh, but there's a lot of nice morality tales and psychology wrapped up in this dark horror. And they do a good job of putting you in a a few big places, big locations that feel like there was a lot of money spent on them, but at the same time close them in to make you feel claustrophobic. And they also bring out some extra creatures and antagonists that you weren't expecting as well. So, nice bit of enemies there, and a nice bit of claustrophobia to put a nice little bow on this really solid story. All in all, I'm going to give this film a 7.5 out of 10. And like I said, technically it's really good. The acting is really good. I just wish they had shaved like 10 minutes off of the two middle stories to make it super, super tight. But I think 7.5 out of 10 is really solid. I wish this was considered 2020. Uh, it came out in festivals in 2019 and got a U.S. release last year. So it's not considered 2020, even though it came out on Shutter and Prime in 2020. So I cannot put it in my top 10 for this year. If it was a 2020 release, I would say it's top four probably of this year, but sadly it's 2019. Uh, so I'm going to give this film a 7.5 out of 10. I recommend you check it out if you've got Shutter or Amazon Prime. Uh, for those of you guys that want to know the spoilers, if you've seen it or you want to hear the spoilers, here they come. This was the spoiler review. Uh, I recommend it. 7.5 out of 10. Spoilers. Uh, basically, the girl that comes in to look for a job and tells the man Clancy Brown that she won't be scared, uh, he tells her the first three stories, and she goes, well, I've got a story for you that I'll tell you. And so she decides to try and scare him by telling him a story at the end. The babysitter murder, murder story is her story, where she's babysitting and somebody breaks into the house and she has to survive and kill him. And then it winds up being twisted that the guy coming into the house was the actual babysitter, and she's the escaped convict uh, who escaped from the psychiatric ward. You see a thing on the news where it says, like, Escape psychiatric patient in the area, and then someone comes to break into the house, and you think the guy breaking in is a psychiatric patient. In reality, she broke in already. She's the psychiatric patient. She kills the actual babysitter. It winds up being her guilty the whole time. And then she cooks the child in the oven. She has a meal in the oven the whole time. It winds up being the child. So then when she, she tells this real-life story to Clancy Brown's character, and he says basically... I knew it was you the whole time. I, you know, I knew what you were. That's why I hired you. And all of a sudden, babies and stuff and other people that she's harmed in the past kind of resurrect as ghosts in this old parlor and try to trap her soul in there. Clancy Brown escapes and basically leaves her as the new funeral director. He's finally, he was there for years and years paying for his sins. Now he escapes and turns to dust and she takes over the funeral parlor as the new kind of harbinger of evil who's paying for her sins. And a little boy from the beginning who was scared of Clancy Brown comes back and she mentions she's going to have the kid over for dinner. So she's going to cook him and she becomes the new antagonist. So really nice twist. You could see that she was bad from the beginning. It was kind of obvious to me. But the twist of having her be the new funeral director and having her be stuck there to pay for her sins was nice. Bringing back the little boy from the beginning was nice because now she can be the new evil main character. And I would like to see more of these in the future. It's set up for, for more sequels. Or you could bring back, back Clancy Brown in some way from the dead, uh, being around that parlor. Or you could have uh, Caitlin Custer as the new uh, mortuary director and have her kind of tell more stories to other people, other kids who are the next person coming in. I would like to see more of these films because I really enjoyed it overall. 7.5 out of 10. Tell me in the comments below if you've seen it. 
Um, if you want to see it, again, it's on Shutter and Amazon Prime. I highly recommend it. Go check it out, and I will see you guys soon with another edition of The Drive-In.